What's up? I'm here with Muslim, and we looking at some tweets from Muslim Twitter. Hotel staff need cultural sensitivity training. To understand if they see a water bottle in the toilet, not to throw it out. Ding, 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 ding. Office worker, hotel staff, they like, oh, garbage. Why is that garbage specifically there, half full with water, not the liquid that it came in? And I was just like, there has to be a point where you understand that there is a bottle there for a reason. This is so accurate, like, oh my God, dude. They always throw it away. <laughs> Maybe Muslims should demand bidets in all public facilities in the West. I'm thinking of like the thing that you attach to like the actual seat. Oh, and you press it and then just Thanks. like shoots. It's 2023 and we had the 2020 COVID. We were fighting for toilet paper. I think it's time to step up, honestly. Save a lot of paper and trees. I was just offended because it would be there every single day and they would throw it out every single day. These people don't know, they just don't know. Like the days are the way to go. We got reports that you've been leaving a water bottle in the bathroom. And I'm like, yo, who's that pressed while they're in the bathroom, like to go be telling RA, we found a water bottle in there. Bro, do your business and dip. Like, come on, get, get over yourself. You don't know how many times I had to go downstairs to buy another water bottle and chug it so that I could put it back in the bathroom. Hashtag Muslim shower. Hashtag Lota. I don't know if there's any other ones. Hashtag bidet. I know that skipping Islamic posts is not haram. But the guilt is crazy. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I feel so bad though. I feel bad. Don't skip. Okay, no, you know, it feels wrong to skip. I'll just scroll back up quickly and then the guilt will go away. When I'm scrolling and I then skip it, uh, am I sinful for that? No, inshallah, no, you're not. It wasn't your intention. So inshallah, you're not sinful for that. If you come across a post and they're trying to give you Islamic advice, it's not haram to skip that. That's mm. all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Feel guilty. They know how to guilt trip you and stuff. I feel like this definitely goes for like TikTok especially. It'll be like a recitation and it'll be like the first thing and I'm like, no wait, I'll skip it and I don't want to listen to it first thing in the morning and then I go back because I'm like, wait, no God, I'm here for you. Yeah, when I'm scrolling through and I should be sleeping, I see a lecture, I don't even know what to do at that point. I, I don't know. Like part of me is like, yo, I really should, I, should, I really should read this right now. Where it's like, if you wait one minute and read this dua, like listen to this audio, your parents are gonna da da da. I'm like, I can't. I can't skip this. Especially when it's like so relatable and it's something going on in your life, you feel like you have to, you have to get up and do something with your life. And I also want to say that this is not a purely Muslim phenomenon, okay? So it's not just us. I want to point that out. Absolutely. Like it reminds me of those chain messages on Facebook where it's like, if you ignore this, Jesus knows or something, but it's like, oh, I still feel that guilt. You know how guilty it is for you guys not to be following Muslim on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Snapchat. Thank you for reminding me. White people pronouncing the H and Ahmed. Whatever that creature is. Penguin looking. Ah! Why did it not look cute? I'll be like, can you repeat that a couple more times? And then that'll be me literally trying to pronounce the word. Ooh. Can the general white person who's not a Muslim even do this far? Can they even get this far? I don't think so. I mean, this is like, this is good effort if they can even get this far. That means they're pronouncing correctly. That's they're what they're saying, bro. They yeah. can't even do this. Yeah, they try They try, They try. try to do the throat sound. They try to Yeah, they can't no pronounce no dad, no god, no ain. Uh, it's just like the coughing up <laughs> phlegm. It's sad, because names like Muhammad, they're such a beautiful, even my name, Rahiyuk, you know what I mean? But you gotta Americanize everything. You know, we, we, we were setting up for failure. Come on, we gotta, we gotta do our best. We gotta support our, 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 our white folks trying to be ethnic, you know, trying to be cultured. We gotta support them, you know? It comes from like a guttural like <sighs> in their throat. It doesn't need to be like that. Sometimes they say Ahmed. I don't know why. If you're doing it because you genuinely care about pronouncing things the right way, Right? It's like, I get the same thing. People ask me my name five times just to make sure they pronounce it the right way. So if that's part of that, then, you know, I think I respect it. People genuinely think like Ahmed is a name. And I'm like, I've never, I've never met anyone named Ahmed in my entire life. It's understandable. They just can't pronounce it, I guess. Turn it into a K. I don't know why they turn it into a K. Like I've literally heard Ahmed. Like where is the Kha coming from? It's an H. But when I did learn how to pronounce it, I felt pretty cool, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does look like that. I will say I like the effort. As long as the effort is there, that's all we need. 
the hardest part of Ramadan is holding my tongue. People be doing the most and I just have to have sabr and move on. Some of y'all be testing me during Ramadan. I already have no water, no food, no nothing, okay? And then you come to me talking walkie. Correct. That's just facts. Yep. Hmm. Ooh. Yo. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> no, that's facts. And this is the damn truth, okay? Yeah, 100%. This, I relate to this, especially when you're driving, driving and it's traffic time. I have road rage, okay? I just hold it. Have to have a little bit more patience with them. They're doing stuff that they never do any other time of the year, and they're just learning how to do it properly. But yeah, no, I get it. It's, it's hard out here. That's, that's the best thing to like come out with after Ramadan, I'll say that. But we move on. We have to protect our own hearts. Sabr means to hold patience in anything and everything. Learning that compassion and, and forgiveness, letting it back into your heart. I feel like it's really easy to lose that nowadays, right? My everyday hijabi conundrum when I see a nice outfit, is it is it actually modest or is the girl skinny? That is a fair point. Now this is facts. Not a hijabi, so can't comment. As somebody chopstick shaped myself, there are times where I'm just like, is this, is this good? Yeah, modesty is a spectrum and that's a conversation people should be willing to have in the Muslim community or otherwise. Cause you could be like, okay, this matches it, but then this one also matches it, or it's just completely none of these matches it. And it's like, which one do I choose? Do I go out like? You could try your best. It, there's a lot of new websites out there, like a new, new fashion designers, Muslim fashion designers that are making this modest clothing a lot easier for women. Other than that, uh, you know, you can make it work. How I sleep knowing Allah will fix everything. This is really resonating with me. Is absolutely 100% correct. Absolutely encouraged. This is good content. Very good content. Approve. Once you get into that mentality that you know everything is in Allah's hands. And you know that Allah will fix everything. Allah will provide for us. Allah will give us the proper ending. Yeah, this is a good feeling. You just true belief, tawakkul Allah, to truly believe in Allah. That's how you sleep. Wallah, sometimes, you know, I'd be stressed and stuff, but... I have this saying, it's called Irmiha Allah. I can definitely attest to that. It hits a little different because usually I'm like crying my eyes out because I'm like, oh, everything is going wrong. I haven't prayed enough. This is why it's happening. That's it. You really don't need to worry. It gets you ease, you know what I mean? Even through hardships, you have to know there's ease at the end. So for sure, Allah will fix everything. And Every now and then I just remember that, you know, we're here to, you know, ultimately perform well in this life so that we can live better in the, in the, in the next life. And it, I think that brings me a lot of peace and solace. So at the end of the day, Allah loves us. You know what I mean? My knees every time I, I go down for a Jude. Oh my gosh, bro. Every time, every time. And I'll just hear like the, the pop and the crackle and I'll be like, not me though. I, I feel like I have bad knees. Yo, I'm like 23 and my like my knees be cracking and my back be cracking. I feel like an old man. Taller people, if you may or may not know, but our knees, they can kind of start to sound like popcorn. This is actually really, really sad because I am not that old, but I'm not that young. And I have come to the point where my knees are clackety click every time I try to bend down. It's not because I don't know the right or wrong way. Yeah. It's because if I do the right way, it hurts. It hurts my leg. Every, it sounded, it sounded crazy out there. It sounded like some, some crack. <laughs> I forgot what they're called. The pain I feel there, okay? The cracks, the crackle pops that occur in there. The snap crackle pop that you hear in, in Juma in Trawi, like, it's, it's like a symphony of just Yeah. It's July 4th every day, every time I pray. It's bad, but it's, it's good at this thing. It's a good kind of pain, because you need that. That's what Salah is for. You've seen those 70 year olds who are still doing their five times prayer because they, that's what a stretch. Getting asked about when I'm getting married. It's in October, inshallah, minor details are missing. It's just a room. <laughs> I feel like next time somebody asks me that, that's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> I can't relate to that. When this question gets asked, that's a perfectly appropriate response. Yeah, this hurts my feelings. That's my reaction. Muslims in marriage? Hand in hand. Hand in hand. This, is, hand this hand. is the reason why we got alliteration, right? The hardest part is finding the right partner, but that's the hardest part, wallahi. May Allah bless us all with a, a good spouse. 
I feel like a part of our culture, just like we all like romanticize the idea of like marriage, like how beautiful it's gonna be, this, that, but like. I, I have every part of my wedding planned out except the person I'm marrying. So honestly, they're not wrong. I, I feel them. I just want the party. Don't really need the husband part of it. But yeah, you can shower me in gifts and all. When there's 30 seconds left till Fajr. And you just woke up. That's a crazy picture. I don't know what that is, but that's exactly how I feel. I turn into the flash. Yo, I swear. Especially in Ramadan, for that last cup of water, I'm, I'm dashing. But when you got 30 seconds, you better be running like that. You, your image better be faded. Just because I do sleep through my alarm clocks, so that's the struggle. Pretty much everyone will wake up, minus me. Like I said, Fajr, Fajr is the hardest thing to wake up for by far, but you know, it, the reward is worth it. If y'all consistent, like that's all, you know, I res respect it to death, you know? I'm running, like I'm running with the waters everywhere and I'm like, need to pray before it's done. <laughs> like, like if you've been praying Fudger for a year, like your body wakes up naturally, come on. <laughs> what are y'all starting to dislike more and more the older you get? My age group acting like the judgmental aunties I hated growing up. Yeah, dude, I've noticed that, like, ooh. Get all that judgmental energy out of your heart. I don't know, I didn't really deal with judgmental aunties when I was growing up, so I don't, I can't really relate to it, but I understand it. We're not perfect Muslims, you know? I th yeah, I think what they're, even with they're specifying my age group, I think mm -hmm. that doesn't even mean everybody, but like. People may hate it, but they're there, they're looking for you, so. I hope their intentions are right. You gotta just gotta, you know. Respect other people, you know what I mean? Treat others how you wanna be treated. It's the golden rule, you know what I mean? As simple as that. Cause people like that are always gonna exist, unfortunately, but you don't need to be part of it and you don't need to act in it. Sometimes like, you know, I'm judgmental. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I know like I shouldn't be and I, I wish I wasn't and I try to be better. We gotta do the break, the, 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 the change, the cycle of being judgmental. Just be happy with yourself. That's the whole point, right? We're trying not to be like the people who traumatized us before.